called tonight using as a subject hidden figures hidden figures my dear friends as Michelle Obama begins packing up the first family to vacate the White House as the first african-american occupants the black community is experiencing early withdrawal and in almost anticipation Hollywood has released two films at the same time to help ease the pain Fences with Denzel Washington and the cinematic anthem to the genius of black women called Hidden Figures. The film chronicles the story of three sisters who were mathematicians responsible for calculating flight trajectories for Apollo 11, which placed man on the moon, helping the United States win the space race landing John Glenn in history as the first to make a complete orbit around the earth. What makes the feat so remarkable is the mathematicians with melanin were regulated to work in the segregated section of Langley Research Center. It was their appearance not their intelligence Mama. that had the system keep them hidden. Mama. Just like Samuel's house looking to anoint a new king, they kept David hidden because they didn't think he looked like the description. I bear witness to you tonight that you can no longer be hidden. Your gifts, your greatness, your brilliance are about to be exposed. A short not to get nominated for an Oscar, having no studio backing or superstar cast, going straight to DVD since 2011, is the Kickstarter funded series entitled Hidden Colors a documentary on the untold history of people of African descent. It discloses the role of our people in the earth and the belligerent attempt to distort our image and our accomplishments from the intentional changing of the color of Jesus Christ and the real reason why slavery was abolished. There have been people and principalities that have been trying to paint a disparaging representation of who you are, but through grace, your true colors have been able to shine through. Jesus warned, a candle on a hill cannot be hid. There is a far eastern expression that I want to share with you on this night. That Far Eastern expression suggests there are three things that can't remain hidden. All right. Three things that cannot remain hidden. The first is the sun. The second is the moon. And the third is the truth. Three things that cannot remain hidden. The sun, yeah. the moon, yeah. and the truth. Teetering on the brink of irony and outrageousness is the fact that in America, yeah. the court system deals with addicts like they are criminals yeah. instead of like patients. Amen. And the guilt of the church is that we treat addicts like criminals as if they're not children of God. 
you won't get denied employment because of diabetes. But if you use barbiturates, you'll lose the opportunity. Cancer hasn't been used to harm someone's career, but alcoholism has. So in an attempt not to be ostracized, droves within our community hide their addictions in the closet and manage miraculously high-functioning lives, contributing to the fact that 100 addicts die a day in America, by and large attributable to the fact that they have not been exposed to intervention. These closet addicts are co-workers, neighbors, waiters, mothers, teachers, cashiers, counselors, and preachers. There are over 20 million Americans who are living in recovery. But if those in recovery continue to hide in plain sight, the suffering will continue to languish in silence. You can't continue to hide your addiction. Please forgive me for being direct. But you can't continue to be discreet with depression. You can't continue to hide binge eating, jealousy, rage, hypertension, perversion, dissatisfaction, rejection, unhappiness, and debt. You got to bring it out and deal with it. The whole axiom suggests you can't fix it until you face it. And I came to say to those of you who are here tonight, you can't live another year trapped in the closet. The hanger is getting ready to break. What you are carrying is too heavy for a wire hanger. In Daniel chapter 3, the narcissism and egotism of King Nebuchadnezzar comes out with him erecting a gold image of himself. You do not have time for people who just need to be praised. Y'all just missed that. You do not have time for people who have no peace unless you celebrate them. Every time you talk about what you're doing, they then infuse what they've done as if your accomplishment is a competition to their success. It becomes draining having to massage somebody who has no muscle. If they always have to be contingent on your accomplishment and your affirmation, then they are not suited to be in your life. In this season of your life, you need people who in fact are reminiscent to the box of toys you got as a child, no assembly required. I need whoever comes to me now to be prepared to deal with somebody secure. If you cannot handle somebody who is fine in their own skin, I'm not for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing because I know who I was before I met you. So I don't need your compliments to tell me who I am. Because guess what, boo? If you don't say it, a stranger will on the street. Because they recognize the value of greatness that's on my life. They told everybody to bow down and worship. But three refused. They refused knowing that it was going to come with a threat. And the reason why some of you have attracted such animus from the adversary is because you are not a closet person. 
Isn't it interesting? Nobody ever gives the witness that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down. And here's what your Sunday school teacher never investigated. What was Daniel doing? Now here is my mentor, the person who has schooled me in the faith. But the Bible is clear that only three people didn't bow down. But the person who in fact was my mentor is nowhere accounted for. Now it's amazing that in chapter 3 when I'm under attack is the only place where Daniel isn't mentioned. Isn't it amazing that the people who always got wisdom, insight, and advice will always show up in the chapters you don't need it. But the time when you really need somebody to pour into your life, you can't find them anywhere. I don't need you in chapter 1 or chapter 2. I'm already out of it in chapter 4. I want to know what your anointed self. Where were you when I was getting ready to be thrown in the fire? Where were you when I was reevaluating my faith journey? And Daniel is nowhere. You would have a much easier year if you would just learn how to pocket your praise. If you would just find a way to, in fact, suffocate your shouting, the enemy would not be upset. Your problem is you have been infected with the mind frame of Paul that I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, if you, in fact, just drop a mic in this microphone, the decibel of praise you hear right now sounds like people who had an easy year. But the fact that you can give God glory, even in the chapters of your life where you weren't feeling it, and it was hard to believe it, but you say God is still good all the time, the enemy can't figure you out. Now, those of y'all that had a good year, I ain't talking to you. But those of you that understood this was the year I had to bless God when I wasn't feeling blessed. This, this was the year that I had to praise Him when I was struggling to lift my hand. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This was the year I had to talk myself in the tithing because I had bills that were past due. This was the year I had to make myself go to church because I wanted to stay in the bed because I wasn't feeling it. But every time I entered to a stage with Thanksgiving, God would open up a door I couldn't see. And the king told them if they didn't cooperate, they would get killed. This is the year, 2017 is the year you're going to see who people really are. I was on a conference call earlier tonight and I said to them, watch this, you don't know who people really are until you tell them no. God, I can't hear nobody, everybody with you as long as you agree. But if you want to know what people are really made of, tell them no and see how they respond. If they can still rock with you after that, then you found a person of character. This is the year I wish I could tell you. This is going to be the year that things are just going to go smooth. I wish I could tell you this will be the year of no contention. But I need 50 of you. I'm telling you, I'm going to break a chain just at the pronouncement. This is going to be the year Satan is going to try to make you change your mind. God help me. He's, he's going to make you try to recalibrate your decision. And second guess, should you have stuck with God? But what the enemy don't even understand is he tried that last year. And if I was able to bless God after the hell I went through last year, I'm telling you what shall separate me from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. See, some of the folks sitting around you, they can shout, watch this, because things went well for them. But I'm talking to those of y'all, stuff got so tight, you could barely breathe. You didn't know whether you were having a stroke, a heart attack, or a nervous breakdown. You couldn't even see straight. You couldn't sleep at night. You didn't have an appetite. But you said, under your breath, God, I trust you. God, I don't know what you're doing, but I still believe you're able. Yeah. 
Marcus three. Those three went under attack for one basic reason. Hallelujah. I feel glory. I'm trying not to cry. Hallelujah. The reason why they went under attack, watch this, is because they wouldn't change their mind. I still believe what he said. I don't know where you are in this room, man. Hallelujah. I'm talking about all the evidence was stacked up against you. And if you weren't rooted in faith, you would have become an atheist. You, you would have walked away from God and walked away from the church. But you refused to change your mind. I still believe I'm called. I still believe I'm anointed. I still believe I'm destined. I still believe I'm chosen. I still believe I got a future. I still believe God. If 
looks like the Son of God. Now the reason why this is a problem is Jesus is not prophesied until the book of Isaiah. He doesn't show up until the book of Matthew. But in Daniel chapter 3, he comes ahead of schedule because they praised him under fire. God told me to tell you, I hope y'all are shout over this. There was some stuff you weren't supposed to get until next year. But if you praise me under fire, I'm going to reveal it early. I don't know where you are in this room, but if you want to see God tonight, I need you to get three people by the hand and say, I'm Shadrach. You be Meshach. The last one be a bit of If all three of us are in something, and if we shout You ain't gonna see a Maybach, but you gonna see Jesus. If there is anybody here that wants to see his face, open up your mouth and shout like you wanna see him.
God, show me you're walking with me. I want his presence to be so undeniable that even when I can't see it, my enemies can. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am the son. That's what I want for 2017, Lord. Let me see your glory. And I want to see it in my house. I want to see it in my children. Here's for 50 crazy people. I want to see it in my bank account. I want to see his glory. And those of you who first for the things of God, he want to see his glory. I need you to come meet me at this altar quickly, please. Pastor, I haven't been seeing him lately. And I need to see his glory. see his glory. I want to see his glory. Would you pull it as close to this altar as you can now? Yeah? Throngs of people that are coming behind you. Would you lift up that hand? I want to see it. I want your glory.
can he open up your mouth right now? Come on, he's getting ready to show up in your fire. I can't hear nobody. Watch this for one minute. Would you just begin to worship for two other people? I need you to cry out at the God for two people that are in fire right now. For two people that are struggling right now. For, for two people that got their back up against the wall. Would you shout right now? Somebody's hand is in your hand. Somebody's hand is in your hand. Make sure somebody's hand is in your hand. Lift up that neighbor's hand. I speak blessings over every lifted hand. That this will be the year. I hope you'll shout about it. This will be the year God <clears throat> will not be hidden from you. Uh, Y'all ain't shouting. I said this will be the year God is not hidden from you. I pray that this will be the year that every person connected to you will be delivered. Y'all ain't shouting. I said I need you to shout for every alcoholic in your family. in jail, every person in an abusive relationship, every person with suicidal tendencies, every person fighting depression. Loose that neighbor's hand and lift up both of your hands. This will be the year you don't have to carry people. Can't hear nobody. I said this will be the year you don't have to carry dead weight. I speak over every lifted hand. This will be the year you participate in miracles. You are going to make a miracle happen in the life of somebody else. This is the year your name will not be in rumors of drama or chaos. This will be the year your Blessings are coming in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 2017 is the year of a full recovery. Open up your mouth and shout about it. Open up your mouth. I said shout. I can't hear nobody. Shout for your own. As your pastor, I speak blessings over your life. Softly shining strings. As your pastor, I speak blessings over your life. Amen. And I want to say something and I want you to be able to receive it. What I heard God tell me in prayer this week. This is the year, watch this. Not necessarily recovery of material stuff. Hallelujah. Not everybody's going to get it. This is the year you recover, and I hope y'all go ballistic, wasted feelings. Oh, I can't hear nobody. I said, 
said, this is the year you recover wasted fear. God has given you complete emotional wholeness. I need that hand in your neighbor's hand very softly. I want to say two things and then you'll back, go back to your seat for direction and for instruction. Reverend C. Hughes, what our Sunday school teachers really don't underscore is Noah spent more time on the ark after the flood, uh -huh. waiting for a water to recede, uh -huh. then the flood itself. And as a consequence, he stuck in that ark. God help me. And he don't even know the storm is over. He thinks he's still in the storm. And he don't know the storm is over. God is just draining the flood. What you've been going through since October has not been the flood. It's been the draining. But when Noah stepped out of that ark, he stepped into a different world. I believe in tomorrow when you wake up. Hallelujah. You're stepping into a new world. I really thought y'all were going to shout about that. I said, when you go out of your bed tomorrow, you are stepping into an alternative universe. Let me give the disclaimer so that we're clear before we celebrate. What we learn from Daniel through the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can be anointed and still get tested. You can hold to your convictions and still be under attack. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is your best shot of the night. You will not see God until you go through fire. Amen. So the fire is necessary for you to see God. So the last shot of the night, and then you're going back to your seats. I've got to give you two things before we leave. Your last shot of the night. Sun Tzu in the art of war said that the secret of your success is to confuse your enemy. <laughs> last shot of the night. All over the world, people are shouting for victories. Yes. Here's what I want you to do to confuse the enemy. Would you shout? For all your fires.
Watch this after you cross over. You just crossed over nine minutes ago. Go to verse number nine, please. And then you are going to prolong your days. In other words, God is extending your life. He just ripped up your death certificate. I can't hear nobody. He says, I'm getting ready to bless you and 500 of y'all better shout. I'm going to bless you with the stuff I promised your grandmother. I can't hear nobody in here. Let's go to verse number 10. Verse number 10. For the land which you're going to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you've come, where you sold your seed. Watch this. Where you sold your seed. Verse number 11. Where you sold your seed. Watch this. It's going to be blessings that you will possess. Hills and valleys. And you're going to drink water from heaven. I need to go to verse 12. Please, y'all got verse 12. Thank you. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord, watch this, are always on what you sowed. And here's what I need to get you to. Clause C of verse number 12. God is watching it when? From the beginning of the year to the end of the year. How many of y'all believe by faith every day in 2017 God is going to be looking out for me and mine? Y'all ain't shouting me. I said, how many of y'all believe there will not be a day in 2017 when you don't get a blessing from God? Let me remix it. How many of y'all know I'm expecting 365 blessings in 2017? If that's yours, I dare to shout. I'm getting it all. God is looking at your seat from the beginning of the year and he's going to watch it. Until the end of the year, why is he going to do that? To make sure what you walk into uh -huh. is better than what you came out Come of. Come on now. How many of you all need your 2016 to be better than your 2017? God is getting ready to do that for you. What an incredible privilege you have that you are getting ready to sow your first seed of 2017. Mama. Your first offering for the brand new year. There is a legal term called the law of first mention. That what happens first sets the stage and the precedent of everything that happens right. thereafter. Yeah, yeah. In legal terms, those of you who have ever gone to court, God forbid, your lawyer always had to reference a case that came before yours. Right, right, right. 
this sets the case for what God is getting ready to do for you for the rest of the year. I told the earlier services that every year I give a seed to God of 365. I give God at the beginning of every year a seed of $365. Why? Because I want God to bless me every day of the year. Now, let me get back this claim to that. That is not scripturally founded. Nowhere in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, do they ever ask me to do that. That's what I do. I said to the earlier service, I says, too many of you are jealous of people you should study. You just missed that. I said, you're jealous of people you should study instead of trying to get what they have, figure out what they did. Right. Jeremiah writes, and it's all right to be a copycat if you know which cat to copy. Right. Amen. And I'm telling you, God has given me incredible blessings on my life. And the same blessings God has put on my life, I want him to put them on yours. This coming Wednesday, I'll be at the White House as a part of President Obama's last exit meeting. I was strategic people from all over the country. Just to be able to be at the table is an honor. How does God take somebody that kicked out, got kicked out of Baltimore City College High School and get them at the round table at the White House? I, I told the earlier service, y'all are joking. I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm the first person in the world to get a doctorate before I got a high school diploma. I graduated from Oxford University, then my high school that kicked me out brought me back. And gave me a diploma. God will bless you and make your enemies reevaluate who you are. Come on now. You may say nothing to me. God will bless you in an amazing way. And I'm believing by faith. Watch this that God, the same oil that God put on me, He's got to put it back into this house. I say this in churches all over the country. I say it in my own. Something is wrong if you go to a church and you can pick out. Which car is the pastor's? Amen. Amen. Something is wrong. You can go to a church and pick out which car is the pastor's. Why? Because the Bible says the oil flows from the head. Mm -hmm. So if you're connected, there ought to be some other people driving just like that. Right. Ought to be living just like that. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, but if the Bible is true, it ought to be transferable. So other people ought to be living like that, ought to be dressing like that, ought to be balling like that, ought not be making the pastor a demigod. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing special about me, but his favor. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But if God can bless me, why can't he bless you? Come on. I can't hear nobody in here. God, God will bless the strangest people. And you got no reason to be blessed. Right. There's no reason in the world you should be anointed and arrogant. You can fool the church people, but you know you're trifling. And for God to bless you anyway, God has no reason to call your name. But to keep calling your name is remarkable in and unto itself. There's no way in the world God should trust me to bless me to pastor a church of this capacity. They're people of greater discipline, of greater insight, of greater revelation, who in fact God could have given charge, but God chose somebody flawed, frail, and broken. Right. And says, I'm going to use you just to prove it, ain't you? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That's when you know that God works. If you're perfect, you don't need them. Right. But if you're flawed, you are exhibit A, God's runway model of what favor looks like. That he looks beyond all of your faults right. and meets you at your knees. Let me see the hands of those of you that think you deserve his blessings. Can I be your friend? Please, because I don't even know what that feels like. Every time he blesses me, it's a surprise party. I'm like, oh my God, did I do that? Did he, he, he chose me in spite of all of that. Over 300 people died this year in Baltimore. And God spared your life. Right. Amazingly. My dear friend and brother, Keon, was incredible health. Goes off on vacation with his family. And now his body has got to be flown back. Phil will be right here in the church next Saturday. And you take your life for granted. What, what makes you so special? Right. That you didn't die in your sleep. Mm. 
What makes you so great that a drunk driver didn't come in your life? How did it happen that while you were in church, a burglar didn't case your house and didn't break in? God's mercy Thank you, Lord. is what covered you. Thank you. It's what fought for you. I don't know why he loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But I'm so glad that he did. Would you bow your heads for me for just one moment? Would you bow?